A total of 66 operators in Rainbow Six, it can be hard to know which one's the right one for you. In this video, I'll be showing you the four best and easiest ones to use for beginners, alongside some useful tips for each one. Uh, the first operator we'll be going over is Sledge. Uh, first of all is the loadout. The main gun you want to be using on him is the L85. Uh, don't bother with the shotgun. The L85 is a uh, easy gun to use, has uh, good damage and not much recoil, which is what you really want if uh, you're new to the game. Attachments don't really matter too much. Like I said, it's an easy gun to use, so you can't really go wrong in the attachments. Just stick to whatever scope you like, and then either a flash hider or, or uh, maybe suppressor if you want on it. For secondary, you only have one choice. Uh, the pistol, again, doesn't really matter what you use. And out of the uh, secondary gadgets, nids, flashbangs, or EMPs, you'll 99% of the time want to go with the nids. Not many operators have nids in the game, and there's a reason why. It's because they're strong. So, where possible, you usually want to be taking them. Uh, his primary ability is his uh, hammer. It's used to open up soft floors, soft walls, anything soft really. It can even be used to destroy gadgets like shields if you get up and close to them. Uh, and this can be useful for pretty much every site. Most sites in the game, there will either be soft floor or soft walls leading either into the site directly or into the rooms near the site. And the way you can use them is just to make vertical normally above the site, force enemies either out of the site or if they stay in, you can kill them using the vertical holes. And the great thing about Sledge is you can almost never go wrong by bringing him. There's very few times where, you know, by sledging something, you'll be hurting your team. So if you're new to the game, you don't exactly know what to be, don't know what to be doing. You can normally just bring Sledge, Sledge any soft walls you find. Typically into the site is always good and you'll be helping your team somehow. As you get better at the game, you'll be learning the, the standard places you want to be sledging, maybe things you don't want to be sledging. But like I said, if you just stick to the basics, going above the site, sledging down, you can't really go wrong. Next up is Jaeger. Uh, for his loadout, I would take the Carbine with really any attachments again are fine. Typically the foregrip as alongside a flash or muzzle brick or uh, what you want to be running on 90% of ops. Uh, scope, just go whatever you like. Hollow is uh, the standard. And uh, for a secondary gadget, you either have barbed wire or bulletproof camera. Uh, both of these are really strong, so you, can, you can't go wrong with either one. But uh, if the simplest way is just to take barbed wire. And if you don't know where to put it, either put it on some stairs leading up to the bomb site, Or if there's no stairs, just entrances into the bomb site. This means uh, you know, your team won't get caught off guard by someone sneaking in. Uh, his ability, his uh, main primary ability, is uh, his ADSs. These are little troopy systems, which can catch uh, projectiles, flashes, nids, yin candles, anything, anything throwable really, apart from a few select abilities. Uh, he has three of them. Each one will catch uh, one, one projectile, then has a 10 second cooldown. So typically the main thing with Jaeger is you just want to get them done. Because it's a kind of set and forget it ability, you know, once it's done, it's done. It doesn't matter if you die. The important thing is just to get them down in uh, important positions so that even if you lose your gunfight or even if you don't uh, you know, have much impact on the run, your ability is, can still help your team. Using it to protect shields or bulletproofs or uh, using it to protect your teammates from nids is the primary use you would have for it. Uh, over time, you'll learn where to place the radius, but as a general rule, if you don't know, then you can normally just place them on the entrances to bomb sites. Any doors or windows leading into the site are you know, usually safe bets. Uh, and remember the bulletproof. Uh, a simple but pretty good strategy you can have is just to pair the bulletproof with the ADSs. So just put the bulletproof somewhere where it can't be knifed or shot in the side, and then protect it from explosives using your ADSs. Uh, if you just use one or two ADSs for this, then it means that the enemies, you know, they're going to need to burn the ADS before they can knit it or ash charge it or something like that. So you're forcing the enemies to actually coordinate before they can take out your info. Ash is a 3-speed with two great guns. This is already enough to make her a good op, but what makes her really great if you're new is just how simple she is to use. Her primary gadget is uh, she has two breaching charges, or two breaching runs. These can be used to either destroy gadgets like uh, shields, Malusi Banshees, stuff like that, or to uh, open up floors and walls. Typically though, you want to be saving it for uh, opening up uh, either walls that are far away or destroying gadgets. You don't really want to be using her Breaching runs to destroy floors or to destroy, uh, you know, walls that are beside you. 
She has uh, claymores and uh, breaching charges as her secondary gadgets. So if you need to open walls or floors, you can always just bring breaching charges. For her loadout, I would say uh, I would say that the G36 is the better of the two guns. She has G36 and the R4C. A lot of people like the R4C, but uh, with his recoil right now, I don't think it's that great of a gun. Uh, the pistol doesn't really matter what you use, and like I said, she has uh, breaching charges or claymore as her secondary gadget. So you can pick and choose between what you want. Maybe on a map like Bank, if you're friendly CEO or consulate where there's a lot of windows, you might want to bring the claymores. On other maps where you might be going above, let's say coastline or something, uh, that's the one you would want to bring the breaching charges. You can use these to open up a floor or walls, and then you can see if you're breaching rounds for utility like shields and stuff. Uh, I think she's really great for new players or intermediate players because regardless of what kind of player you are, if you're experienced in FPSs or if you're new to FPS games, she really fits anyone. If you're new to FPS games, the only way to get better is to practice. So take on Ash, go for the opening frags, go for the, uh, you know, go for kills. And this is the best way to improve. You know, you're only going to improve by uh, practicing fighting. So she's great for that. And if you already have experience, then, you know, you're going to be great on her naturally. Uh, if you played other FPS games, you know, CSGO, Valorant, whatever, uh, you've got experience aiming, you're going to know how to how to take certain fights, and, you know, you're naturally going to be pretty good on Ash because that's what her main role is. So Ash is a great operator if you're new to the game or getting better at it. Uh, the final op is uh, Bandit. Uh, Bandit has a great gun in the MP7. Really easy to use, easy recoil, and pretty good F uh, DPS. Uh, for his ability, he has uh, four bandit batteries. These can, these can be used either on walls or things like shields and uh, barbed wire. Typically, you don't want to be using them on shields and barbed wire. They're just, it's a feature, but you shouldn't really do that. The primary uh, use for them is to keep walls closed and to do what's called bandit tricking. Basically, you know, once, uh, once they destroy your ba first bandit battery, you replace it and uh, make sure they can't jump on the wall. Uh, this can be great just because it forces the enemies into either walk through doors or to go out of their way to try clear it. They can do this by either maybe going above the site or below the site and uh, destroying it with some sort of explosive or shooting it. But really, if you're wasting the enemy's time by making them go around the map and destroy these, you know, you're doing a great job. Uh, Bandit does have a few counters, things like Twitch, uh, Kali, Thatcher, or any attacker with the mini MPs. But if you're forcing the enemies to change their loadouts or change their operators to bring something to counter you, you're already doing a great job better than, you know, if you if you didn't do anything. <laughs> so you're helping in some way. Uh, and a great thing about him again is that uh, like Jaeger, his ability is kind of set it and forget it a lot of times. Unless you're bandit tricking, which you don't have to do, you can just place your bandit batteries down on the outside walls and you're good to roam them about or just play far back in sight. Uh, as a general rule of where to use your bandit batteries, you should try to use them on walls that face out of the bomb site, especially walls that lead to outside the map. Uh, not so much on walls between the sites, unless maybe you have a mirror window or something like that that you want to protect. Uh, for his loadout, he has the MP7. Uh, I would recommend something like a hollow on it, uh, for grip, and then for the barrel, again, anything's fine. Maybe flash hider or a suppressor is what I would use, but, you know, I'm sure muzzle and... Uh, Compensator is also fine. Uh, for his secondary, he only has one choice, the pistol. And for his secondary gadget, you can either bring barbed wire or C4. I would normally uh, choose uh, C4 since there's already a lot of other operators in the game that have uh, barbed wire, as well as a lot of trap operators. So hopefully your teammates should have discovered. If you see that no one's bringing barbed wire or you don't have any sort of L lesion, something like that, then you could switch to, uh, to barbed wire just to make sure that you have it covered. But typically, C4s are great. Things like denying plant or uh, just taking, take, getting kills with it is uh, pretty useful. At the end of the day, uh, most operators in the game can be strong if used correctly. And so the most important thing is just to find a few operators that you like and try to get good at these specifically. Siege is a hard game, and if you try to learn every operator all at once, all their strengths, counters, everything about them, you're going to find it overwhelming. Just find two to three operators for attack and defense and main these until you get comfortable. Then you can try moving on, learn some more, and eventually, you know, maybe you'll maybe you know all of them. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or agree with uh, these picks. I'd love to know who your main is, uh, if you have some operators that you think are specifically easy to play. 
And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thanks for watching.